How's it going everybody? In this video we are going to cover another interesting topic about uh, the SP track which is uh, one that I have, don't think I've ever seen anybody do a video on um, so I'm hoping to be the first YouTuber to uh, co cover multipoint GRE L3 VPN. Um, now this is a different design than what you multipoint GRE for those of you that come from the route switch track will um, you should, at least, if you've got like a CCMP level of understanding or above, a uh, DMVPN. And uh, so we're going to take a, um, a design where um, the connection between you and, uh, we'll say you got multiple regional service providers like we did in Carrier Supporting Carrier. The difference between the two is um, the connection between the, uh, the customer carrier and the core provider, uh, that interconnection, so the connection between 5 and 6, 11 and 12, XR4, R, XR5, there is no label exchange. So it's straight up IP. So what ends up happening is your label switch path, so your labeled connectivity between R1 and R3 is not labeled. So you have a label switch path from R1 to R5, there's one between R6 and R11, and there's one between 12 and, and R12 and R3. That's not going to work. It's just not. You're going to have uh, issues with that. And I might say, why, do I, why am I going to have issues? Well, in order for MPLS Layer 3 VPN to work, and, and, and Layer 2 VPN, Multicast VPN, uh, VPLS, whatever you want to throw at it, uh, the problem you're going to run into is that is not going to work as a solution because the moment you break your label switch path or your labeling between two label switch routers is no longer a label, MPLS is no longer going to be able to get you from point A to point B. Now we saw in the carrier supporting carrier video that we were looking at between, 12, between 9 and I think 11 hops. Um, now we're looking at 3. So, the difference between the two is uh, a scenario where um, labeling has the, the label switch path is an end to end. So, this is very possible where you have a, um, although you have reachability, it's just not a labeled reachability end to end. And I'll, I'll do a trace route and show you guys what that looks like. Um, now I'm just taking a very simple simple design here and um, the interconnectivity between the service <laughs> the regional service providers might be um, maybe straight IP and there might not be anything in between that's labeled. That's okay though. Now in this design um, you've got a regional service provider on the west coast, a regional service provider on the east coast. They're the same provider say provider 2. Well, what ends up happening is if your label switch path is broken between them then you're not going to be able to deliver end-to-end -end layer label switch path. So therefore label th layer 3 VPN or any MPLS service is no longer going to work. Um, so to fix that we are going to be taking a look at a, another solution and that's going to be the multipoint GRE or MGRE layer 3 VPN. So, for those of you that are familiar with DMVPN, multipoint GRE is used. Uh, and some people ask, well, is that a solution? And it is. You can run DMB, you can run multi, uh, MPLS over DMVPN, and I believe that is RFC 2547, um, which is MPLS over DMVPN. So what you effectively are doing is you are connecting all of your provider edge routers to each other through a GRE tunnel. And um, now I've talked to some other engineers. So there's some um, some back and forth and some whatnot. And it was actually kind of a cool discussion because I had never, I would never have used GRE tunnels as a solution for MPLS. And when they brought it up, they're like, you know, it's on the blueprint for SP. And actually, it's it's not. Um, if you go and you 
and I actually asked this question uh, probably about a week ago uh, to the Cisco Learning Network. I asked the program manager for the CCIE SP track. I asked specifically, I said, hey, you know, there's some, uh, when version 4 went to version 4.1 with the evolving technologies um, uh, addition or uh, uh, topic added, um, they mentioned that there were a few topics that had been removed, one of which was MGRE layer 3 VPN. So what that means is um, that is no longer a topic that will be tested on. So you might say, well, why do you care? Well, it's because the fact that I was already here and, I've, and I knew about it, so I figured I'd go ahead and cover it anyway because, you know, you never know. Somebody might actually, I already did a blog post on it, and the blog post links will be in the description below, as I've been doing. I'm going to continue to keep doing that. Blog post, video, cop, topic uh, covered up to that point. Um, so the idea here is that R1 and R3 still need to have reachability. It's just not end-to-end -end LSP. So to prove that it does work, we're going to do a trace route to 192.0.2.3 sourcing from loopback 0 numerically. And we get all the way across the board. So we get to router hop number three here is no is not labeled and hop number six is not labeled. So because those two hops aren't labeled, your end-to-end -end label switch path will not work. So that was the first thing I was like, oh okay, that's different. Now normally that's not going to be a big deal. Uh, there are many different ways to accomplish that. Um, one of which is to create a GRE tunnel between the provider edge routers and enable MPLS on that. Um, which is, it does solve the problem, and you, spe and you go and you create a route map that specifies the next hop. Um, that does work, uh, although I wouldn't recommend that. Um, it is a solution. So in our case here, we have a, uh, I have it working currently. And again, that's one of those things where I'd rather just cover a working scenario and show you what I did to get it working and you guys can play around with it if you'd like or check out Rikers Island training for that type of stuff to be updated uh, off camera I have a list of topics that I plan on covering uh, at the CCMP level that are CCA topics that will be brought down now uh, R2 and R4 still need reachability but currently they, they do not have it because of the fact that there is no uh, well it's working as I speak but before that I broke the label switch path. So what ended up happening was between R5 and R6, R11 and router 12, and then R XR4 and XR5, I disabled the uh, BGP plus label capability. So by doing that, um, label label exchange between the, the peerings isn't working anymore. Now one might ask, well, do you really need a provider in the middle? To, for this to work. My assumption is no. Um, I haven't tested it without a provider in the core where it's just straight IP between the, the regional service providers. But because of, assuming that reachability is in place, one would have to assume that it would work as long as um, the providers could reach each other. Now, whether that was, you know, a uh, maybe the Maybe the provider edge, what would have been the ASBR, R5, R12, um, or maybe even XR and R12 would have formed a, a tunnel and ran, you know, ISIS over that and would have exchanged the routes that way. Um, it really wouldn't have mattered. But in this case here, um, provider on the left and the provider on the right have IGP or uh, IGP reachability, and that's the key factor here. That's like is the fact that we've propagated the routes up towards the, the core carrier. We've done the uh, the explicit redistribution, filtered it on slash 32 routes, and stuff like that. Now, one of the things that I did uh, when I tested this is I got the, the tunnel up and running. I'll show you what the config looks like here in just a moment. The there's a GRE tunnel sitting between R3 and uh, I'm sorry R1 and R3, and at first, my ping and traces from R2 didn't work to R4. And I was like, what's going on here? 
So what ended up happening was it wouldn't work. So I simply went to R1 and R3 and I disabled the VPN v4 uh, address activation to, to the route reflectors. So R1 is no longer appearing with R8 via VPN v4 and R3 isn't appearing with XR6 via VPN v4 anymore. So what ended up what ends up happening is on R1 do a show run section L3 VPN we end up having to create what they call a L3 VPN encapsulation profile. So we specify the transport is IPv4, which is the only one that is supported, and we specify our loopback. Then we say it's going to be a protocol GRE key is 50693. I try to keep consistency there. And then you create a route map, show run section route dash map. And I call I call it route map L3 VPN. And I set the next hop to encapsulate L3 VPN traffic inside of the profile of L3 VPN. I do this on both sides. Now, once I've done that, you simply have to go under BGP and you have to tie that to the VPN before address family peering to the remote PE, specifying that you're going to attach a route map inbound to inbound updates. So when R1 receives route updates inbound for outbound connectivity towards R4, what ends up, or it could be any destination really, but inbound applies to outbound routes. Okay, so how are you leaving the, uh, the, the autonomous system out to somewhere else? So we're going to affect this, we're going to apply this to inbound to outbound updates. Now, by doing this, we're setting up the, the tunnel. So we do this on both sides, and if we do a show BGP VPN before unicast all, we can see that we've gotten appearing there. If we expand upon that, you're going to see that we learned about the router 4 loopback from tunnel 0. And if we go do a show IP route, VRF CSC, and hit the enter key, we're going to see in order to get to router 4's loopback, we're going to use tunnel 0 to get there. If I expand on that and I go to here, we're going to see that uh, label 17 has been allocated. And that's really it. Once you do that and you've got your peering, I disabled the additional peering because I had I was learning the router 4 loopback update from R8 as well as R3. So, and I was running into issues with that, so I decided to disable the uh, route reflection configuration on R1 and R3. Maybe that was a little premature on my part and I was just waiting for BGP reconvergence but whatever the case I disabled it and um, then I was able to ping it so um, when you look on router uh, 2 and you can see that I just learned router 4's loopback in based off this output about a half hour ago that, that time is a little off because it's been a little while since I verified that but from a trace route at first it looked a little suspect and I was like wait a minute now granted I had never tested this before so I was like hmm this is weird. So I did a ping, the ping worked, so I knew the trace was working. Now you notice that there's only a VPN label showing up here? There's a reason for that. And that's because R3 is the provider edge that connects to the customer. R1 has a direct tunnel configuration, a direct connection to R3. Now because of that, R3 is going to advertise implicit null, which means that R3 is telling R1 pop your transport label to get to me and just send the VPN label. Hence why we only have a VPN label showing up and if you're not sure if that's accurate or not go to R1 and look right here. This is the, uh, if you do a, uh, it, it is accurate, uh, we do a show BGP VPN before unicast VRF CSC and look at this, you'll see that label 17 was applied. So that's how you can tell. 17 was advertised to us by router 3. That's how we learned it. So that is MGRE L3 VPN. The end-to-end -end connectivity is in place, and I'll do the other the other trace route as we're sitting here because it does work. And away you go. That is the that's MGRE L3 VPN. There's really not a whole lot to it. Um, the blog post was very short. I'll have a link in the description for that. Until next time, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by. And the next several videos will be option B, option C, and option D 
for inter AS L3 VPN and then it's going to be a um, kind of a recap of a, not a deep dive but a uh, let's check out layer 2 VPN again and take a look at how that works um, I'm not going to do a lot of the the uh, the blog post that I already did I'm not doing a bunch of videos for that I'll be doing stuff for uh, the BGP act auto discovery stuff and then I'll be doing uh, some hierarchical VPLS and stuff like that different encapsulations types inside the access um, and then once we get done with that it'll be some traffic engineering multicast VPN and then a bunch of some services that I see on the, the blueprint that I want to cover. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.